Hello everybody and welcome back to the DSLR Workshop, the show that's all about photography and not about gear, teaching you how to maximize the power of your digital SLR camera. I'm your host, Steven Zeller, and today in our fourth episode, we're going to talk a little bit about composition. Alright, so we'll go ahead and get started. What exactly is composition? Composition is more or less how we frame our subject within the viewfinder of our, our camera, right? And it's what determines where our subject is placed in the image, and it can also affect how interesting or not so interesting your photo can be. All right, composition kind of stems from uh, when we were kids, okay? Uh, this is where bad composition habits come from because a relative or a parent gives you a camera and you want to take the picture and you're all excited. And they say, okay, well, make sure you get everybody in the middle of the frame and make sure everybody's right in the center and you don't cut their heads off and all that other stuff, right? So if this is the top of your frame and this is the bottom of your frame, what ends up happening is right here in the middle, smack dab in the middle, is where the head of your subject is. And your photo is not interesting at all. Okay, and that's what we call a snapshot. That's a snapshot type of composition. So what I want to teach you is some tricks and tips to make your photos more interesting by doing nothing more than changing your composition. Okay, it's really easy. So one of the rules of composition, and rules are meant to be broken, and we'll talk more about that in a second, but it's called the rule of thirds. And imagine you take an image and you divide it into thirds. So you draw two lines in equal parts horizontally across the photograph, or vertically, I'm sorry. And also horizontally, you draw two lines. It gives you a third. So you've got a third horizontally and a third vertically. It's an imaginary line. But what you want to try and do when you're composing using the rule of thirds is to make two of those lines intersect at some point in the photo where something is interesting. So wherever your subject is, something interesting on your subject, that's where you want to make those lines intersect. Now, rules are meant to be broken, like I said before, but in most cases, you can compose using the rule of thirds and your photo will be really great. Sometimes that's not always the case though. Sometimes you don't want to compose using the rule of thirds. For example, I shoot a lot of portraits, okay? So most of the time, what I'll do to make my portraits more interesting is instead of putting my subject right in the middle, granted I'm still filling the frame, my subject is gonna take up most of my frame, I'm just gonna move them off center just a little bit within that photo. And I'll put up a couple of examples here that you can take a look at. First example is a photo where my subject is right smack dab in the middle of the frame, right, right in the center. Okay, now the composition, the posing of the subject and stuff is good. Subject fills the frame from top to bottom. But what you notice is that they're right in the middle, like I said. Now, this next photo, I'm going to show you where I move that subject just a little off center. So now my subject is sitting just to uh, the left of the frame, as you see it, and it makes it just a little more interesting. It draws the eye a little bit. You're just like, oh, whoa, you know, because you expect the subject to be in the very center of the photograph. Okay, so that's one example. Now what I'm going to show you is I'm going to give you a visual representation of how the rule of thirds works, and I'm going to overlay um, basic rule of thirds so that you can kind of see those imaginary lines and that's what you want to kind of see in the viewfinder when you're getting ready to take your shot and you're composing it using the rule of thirds all right so you can see where those lines are you can see where it intersects makes it uh, easy to compose so when you think about that while you're in the camera it'll help you out a lot now we've got our camera and our camera has several focus points most DSLRs have at least three most of them have more um, the D90 for example has got 11 focus points. So I can use those to help compose my shot using the rule of thirds because I can move those to about where one of those lines would be and where they would intersect. And I can say, okay, that's where I'm gonna focus on my subject uh, or that's where I'm gonna place my subject within my frame and it'll help me give that composition that I'm looking for, okay? Now, most of the time when I shoot, my camera is set with the focus point in the very center. Now, why is that? It's mainly because it's a convenience thing for me. Um, if, my, if I'm making an adjustment to my composition, which I will do after I lock my focus, if I make it a small adjustment, I'll do it and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. I bring my camera up to my eye. Let's say I want to take a shot of the video camera. So what I'll do is I'll lock my focus, I'll recompose slightly, and I'll take the shot. Okay. Now, if I'm making a big change, let's say I focus on the center and I'm moving way over here, that movement of my lens and adjusting the angle of my lens is going to affect my field of focus. So at that point, I'm going to want to use one of my other focus points to help lock my focus in after I've already composed the shot the way that I want it to look. Okay, 
Um, if you move just a little bit, again, it's no big deal. If you're moving a lot, you really need to move your focus point over and try and get closer so that you're not affecting your field of focus. This is especially important if you're using a very shallow depth of field. If you're shooting at f2.8 or, for example, with the lens I have on here, which goes to f1.8, if I'm using that lens and I move my lens at all and I'm at f1.8, my focus is going to change and my subject's going to be soft. Okay, and that's not what I want in my photos. So that's something to think about. So there's some things for composition that will help you right off the bat get more interesting photos. Um, it'll help improve the quality of your photos and uh, just by changing composition. Okay. Now one other note that we'll talk about that goes right along with it is filling the frame. Okay. You want your subject to fill up the majority of your frame in most cases. Now there's certain situations where you don't, like let's say your subject in a photo is going to be very small and you want to put them someplace else within the frame, whether it's a a, let's say it's a boat on the ocean um, or an animal out in the, the wild, whatever the case may be. If your subject's small, you might want to move them someplace else. You definitely don't want to put them right in the middle. But if you're in close, like for a portrait or even if you're a wedding shooter and you're shooting reception photos, you want your subject to fill the frame. Okay, so what do we do? We make them fill the frame. You, you adjust your composition either by zooming with your feet or zooming with your lens so that they fill up most of your, your photograph and uh, again, it's just something that will help make your photos a lot more interesting. All right, so that's all we're going to talk about for composition. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is a little bit of a recipe to how to get really great landscape shots. All right, and some of the things that you're going to need to do and uh, maybe a tool or two that you're going to need to bring with you. Okay, first off, you're going to want to have a wide lens on. Okay, I don't have a wide lens on here right now, but you're definitely going to want to have a wide, wide lens for landscape shots. Something around the uh, 18 to 24 millimeter range. Most kit lenses that come with your cameras, uh, like Nikon has an 18 to 55. Um, they've also got some other lenses that go really wide, like an 18 to 105. Those are going to be uh, the types of lenses that you're going to want to have when you're using landscape photos, okay? When you're taking landscape shots. Something that will allow you to take in a wide amount of the scene. And there's lenses that go wider, like 12 millimeter, 14 millimeter, stuff like that. But uh, an 18 to 105 or an 18 to 55 kit lens will do you just fine. You want to have it set to a wide angle. All right, the next thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to bring a tripod. Now, why are you going to want to bring a tripod? Mainly because you're going to be shooting either early in the morning at sunrise or late in the evening right about sunset, okay? And while you're doing that, um, the light's going to be very low. And so you're going to want a stable platform. It doesn't have to be a tripod. It could even be a monopod or just uh, the hood of your car, something to set your camera on and keep it still while you're taking your shots. Uh, most of the time, your shutter speed's going to be really low because your aperture is going to be very small. You're going to use uh, an aperture like f11 or greater, like f16 or f22. Okay, and that's going to give you a great depth of field for your landscape shot. Okay, also if you're not very familiar with white balance, go ahead and set your camera on auto white balance. Auto white balance will give you a great result and you don't have to worry about fiddling around while your light's changing and things like that, which could cause you to miss the shot. All right, so um, those are some things that will help you get set up for success for landscape photos. Um, and then uh, basically just go out there and, and play around. Um, one last thing I will say though is what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to set your focus point to somewhere uh, in the middle of the photograph, something that's going to be right about the, um, the very center. And the reason that I say that is because usually that's going to be a subject that's somewhere in the middle between your foreground and your background. Okay, so what you'll want to have is let's say you've got a mountain range in the background and you've got a field in, with a stream running through it in the foreground and right in the middle you've got some trees. You'll want to focus on the trees. Those are going to help you keep a great depth of field throughout your entire shot. Everything will stay in focus that way. Okay? All right, well that's all I got for you this show. I appreciate you tuning in. Remember that you can follow us on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash the DSLR workshop. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash the DSLR workshop. Of course you can always visit us on our website at www.thedslrworkshop.com. And don't forget that you can subscribe to our podcast in iTunes. All right, so go to iTunes, go to uh, search for the DSLR Workshop. You'll find us. So hit subscribe, and you'll get the episodes every week right into iTunes. All right? Thanks for hanging in with us. We'll see you next week, and happy shooting.